After airplanes vans began lifting people off the ground and bringing distant places closer, we started covering distances that once took days, weeks, or even months in just a few hours. Thanks to advancing technology, the London-New York route, which took more than 15 days to travel a century ago, can now be crossed in just eight hours. However, even this acceleration wasn't enough for humanity. When our desire to reach destinations faster combined with technology, the Concorde aircraft emerged. These technological marvels, flying at twice the speed of sound at an altitude of 18,000 meters, met the demand for faster travel. However, they failed to achieve commercial success for airlines due to high operating costs and expensive ticket prices, preventing widespread adoption. Since the Concorde, demand for aviation has grown exponentially but travel times have remained nearly unchanged for the past 50 years. However, this doesn't have to be the case. Companies like Boom Supersonic and institutions such as NASA are working to bring supersonic travel back. A standout design in this effort is the Overture. Welcome to Extraordinary Aviation Designs. In this video, we will discuss the resurgence of supersonic travel in civil aviation, recent advancements, and Boom's XB-1 and Overture, the world's first private supersonic passenger aircraft project. One of the biggest complaints of long-distance air travelers is the flight duration. Being stuck in a seat for 10 hours is undesirable for many reasons. In the 1950s and 60s, often considered the golden age of aviation, Europe, the Soviet Union, and the United States initiated supersonic passenger aircraft projects to allow people to reach their destinations twice as fast as a standard passenger plane. Soviet Russia's Tupolev 144, Europe's Concorde, and America's Boeing 2707 emerged from a highly competitive race in research and development. Concorde won that race. This aircraft, which carried passengers at twice the speed of sound, was an engineering marvel of its time. It created a sensation by reducing the London-New York journey, typically eight hours to just 3.5 hours. Unfortunately, this success didn't translate into commercial viability. Concorde was extremely expensive to operate. The project, supported by the UK and France during development, made it to production without collapsing under development costs. However, airlines, notoriously conservative when it comes to aircraft, didn't place enough orders, leading to significantly higher prices. Airlines had a valid reason for their hesitation. In the 1960s, many countries banned supersonic flights over land. For Concorde, this meant it could only fly over open seas or oceans. Due to its limited routes, airlines ultimately decided against purchasing the aircraft. In addition, operating costs were steep. For airlines, which counted the number of olives served to passengers to reduce costs, operating Concorde's fuel-guzzling engines during takeoff and landing was prohibitively expensive. Tickets, which sold for $20,000, were unaffordable for most, leaving the planes often flying below capacity. In 2014, Boom Supersonic was founded to breathe new life into the forgotten realm of supersonic civil aviation. The company's goal is to make supersonic travel ordinary and accessible. Despite current flight restrictions, Boom claims that supersonic passenger planes could operate on 500 routes and believes that its Overture aircraft will enable passengers to fly twice as fast as current planes at business class ticket prices. To achieve this, Boom is leveraging technologies unavailable to Concorde's designers, such as composite materials, materials into aluminum for the aircraft's structure. In the past, Aluminum was the primary material used in passenger aircraft manufacturing. While easy to process and low cost, it didn't allow for certain structural designs needed for efficient aircraft. Additionally, aluminum expanded due to heating during supersonic flight. For example, when Concorde flew at twice the speed of sound, its body lengthened by up to 30 centimeters due to heat caused by friction. The body, frame, and even the wiring of the aircraft had to be specially designed and manufactured to stretch and contract accordingly, adding complexity. Composite materials, however, are more resistant to expansion when heated and allow for the production of lighter, more adaptable structures. Another advantage of modern technology is the use of advanced computers and simulations. When Concorde was designed, almost all calculations were done by hand, and some tests were conducted in wind tunnels. This made testing any design change lengthy and expensive. Today, thanks to advanced supercomputers and simulation software, any conceivable modification can be tested instantly. 
In the latest version of the Overture, Boom has based the fuselage and wing design on a combination of the Concorde and Boeing 2707. While this design is not as quiet as the X-59, it strikes an ideal balance between passenger capacity and operating costs for a commercial aircraft. By making small improvements using software, they are working to develop an aircraft that is more efficient and quieter than the Concorde. Another technology used to improve the Overture is advanced avionics and control systems. A common feature of both the Tupolev 144 and Concorde was that their noses tilted downward during takeoff and landing. The aircraft's long nose and steeper descent angle during landing blocked pilots' views of the runway. To enable pilots to see the runway, the plane's noses were equipped with large, heavy mechanical systems to raise and lower them. However, in the Boom Overture, advanced avionics systems, 360-degree view cameras, and 3D vision goggles, similar to those used in some fighter jets, will allow pilots to see the runway without needing to adjust the nose. The information gained from the XB-1 aircraft, built and flown to test these innovations, will help make the Overture more efficient and quieter. As Boom develops its aircraft, it has accelerated progress by partnering with industry experts in challenging and specialized fields. By collaborating with companies like Honeywell and Standard Aero, they are speeding up the design of the cockpit, wiring, and engines. The most crucial part of these efforts is the engine, the heart of most planes. Initially, Boom's discussions with major aircraft engine manufacturers yielded no results, so the company began designing the necessary engine itself. The engine, called Symphony, is a design that sits between turbojet and turbofan engines. This design will generate enough thrust to allow the plane to take off without an afterburner, unlike the Concorde, and will also work efficiently at supersonic speeds. If everything goes as planned, Boom aims to roll out its first aircraft from its factory, where it has completed the construction of its main hangar in 2026. Boom's only commercial model, the Overture, with a 61-meter fuselage, will carry 64 to 80 passengers over a distance of up to 7,870 kilometers at 1.7 times the speed of sound. Flying at 60,000 feet, the plane is expected to cut current flight times in half. So far, 181 orders have been placed, 35 of which are firm, while 146 are optional. Boom claims that by 2040, at least 1,000 supersonic planes could be flying on 500 routes, and it hopes to meet this demand by producing 100 planes per year in its factory over the next decade. The company also says that if aviation authorities like Europe's EASA or America's FAA deem the planes suitable and allow them to fly over land routes, these numbers could increase further. It remains to be seen whether Boom can meet these targets or sell its seats at business class ticket prices, as claimed in its advertisements. However, the work that began and continues with the XB-1 Baby Boom aircraft has sparked an excitement in civil aviation that hasn't been seen in a long time. We will eagerly follow the development and outcome of the overture. Thank you for watching Extraordinary Aviation Designs. If you found our video useful, please like and share it. You can support our channel by clicking the thank you button or the join button, and don't forget to subscribe to ensure you don't miss our videos on extraordinary aircraft designs in aviation history.